All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're here to talk about Live PC, Give PC. Um, I will just ask for a quick moment before we get started for a couple attendees to let me know if you can hear me okay and see my screen, and then we'll jump right into the presentation. Uh, you can do that in the GoToWebinar control panel on the right-hand side of your screen, uh, right in that questions area. If I could just get a few people to let me know, you can see me in here, uh, or you can see my screen and hear me okay, then we'll go ahead. Perfect, thank you. And um, just as a note, this is a great place throughout today's presentation. If you do have any questions um, as we go through, feel free to uh, type them in there and we'll make some time at the end to, um, to answer any of those questions. And I also, just as a quick note, we will be recording this presentation, so don't feel like you've got to capture everything down. We'll have the recording available up on the website after today's presentation, so you could always go back and review it later if you have any questions. All right. So again, thanks for joining us. We're here to talk about Live PC, Give PC. Some of you may I'll be participating for the seventh year in a row. Some of you might be new. We're here to talk about really all the basics with uh, getting your page set up, ready for the event, uh, and some basic giving day strategy here. My name is Bethany. I uh, work with Mighty Cause, and I've had the pleasure of working with the Live PC Give PC event and the team over at the Park City Community Foundation for a number of years now. Um, and we're also joined today on the call by Ollie Wilder from the Community Foundation, and you'll be hearing from him in just a moment. Very quickly, uh, hopefully Mighty Cause is a name that is familiar to you on the call, but just in case it's not, Mighty Cause, um, our former name, Razu, uh, has been uh, the partner, the technology partner for this giving event since the very beginning. Um, and we've been uh, very proud and happy to partner with the Community Foundation on this effort. Um, we are the technology platform, so we host your, uh, your online giving page, um, and year-round we offer this platform for nonprofits of all sizes to, uh, to really um, improve and uh, make the most of their online fundraising strategy all year-round. But we're here to talk today about Live PC, Give PC, uh, which is a really exciting and important initiative in Park City. And for this, I'm gonna turn it over to Ollie, who is joining us today to say a couple words to get us started. Thanks so much, Bethany. Um, we're really excited. This is actually gonna be the eighth year of Live PC, Give PC. We've been at it since 2011. Uh, the event has raised over $7.9 million over that time. And, Last year alone, we raised over $2 million from over 4,000 donors. Really amazing. And the purpose of it really is to make sure that this whole community acknowledges the great work that nonprofits do and supports that work. Um, the, we're really looking at trying to build capacity among nonprofits, give them more options for raising money, and at the community level, really raising awareness um, of Park City's nonprofits and everything they do. And I think. Live PC, Give PC has been really effective at doing that, and we're looking forward to having that be yet again a, a big success this year. Park City Community Foundation is really proud to host the event, um, and uh, we look forward to another really great year. Wonderful. Thanks, Ollie. So now we are ready to jump right in and get started with all the basics of what you need to know to uh, get up and running for this year's campaign. Uh, for those of you that have used uh, the platform and participated in the event before, uh, you'll notice just a couple of things that are new on your uh, dashboard when you log in. So we'll make sure to cover all of those things today. So whether you are a new participant or returning participant, we've got lots of helpful things to cover here today. So the very first and most important thing is that everybody registers to participate in the event. Even if you've participated in years past, registration is required every single year so that we know who all is actively participating. So 
right from livepcgivepc.org, your main call to action button right at the top of the page will be nonprofit registration. It's a very short form uh, to give you access to your organization's page and to give the Park City Community Foundation information they need for your participation. So fill out that for short form. You will be approved, hopefully, and you'll receive notification that you're ready to uh, go in and start managing your page and participating in the event. Um, and once you are approved, once you are an administrator for your organization's page on the Live PC Give PC site, you can add or re remove additional administrators. So if you need to add a board member or your accounting person, you can do that right through your settings page and I will show you where that is just a little later on. So once you register, you can turn your attention to navigating the platform, updating your page, making sure that your uh, page is ready for the event and you know how to access all the most important things that you'll need, like your donations report and other, other important details. So the first thing I'll mention is that uh, we have an updated dashboard for those of you who have used uh, this event in the past. So you'll see a couple of new icons on your dashboard. And I wanted to make sure we took a brief moment to walk you through what's where uh, so that you know where to access the most important things. So you'll notice we've added a home screen, your welcome screen. This is the first screen that you'll see when you visit your organization's dashboard. This is only for you as an administrator. And here you'll see some uh, brief uh, stats right up in, in those top sections on kind of some key metrics that have been happening uh, through your organization's fundraising efforts. Uh, you'll also see a brief to-do list below that. That to-do list covers some of the most important things in terms of updating your page, setting up your uh, disbursement via direct deposit, a couple of other key things. So that to-do list is a great place to start, making sure you check off all those items. As we move down your dashboard, the next icon that you'll see is for your profile. This is the organization page that you have known and loved for many years. Um, and the organization page itself has not changed from last year. So anything that you built or customized on last year's page should still be there for you. And you have the opportunity by accessing that profile and clicking on the page editor to add new information for this year's event, uh, update any images that you have, but it's that profile really will be this, the key page that you customize and then share with your donors and supporters in advance of this event. Next down uh, the screen on your dashboard, you'll notice your donations icon. This is where you can access your donation data, access any disbursement reports, you can also customize your donor experience. This is something that uh, is relatively new this year, um, so we'll make sure to walk through what you can access in that donor experience tab. Um, but this is also the screen where, you're, where you will manage any matching grants. Very important and exciting part of LivePC GivePC. If you have any of your own uh, matching grants that you're able to secure, you can add that to your page, and that would also be done through that main donations icon. We'll talk about that more later, but just a key um, key note of where you'll find that. Moving further down, you'll see a new campaigns screen. This is a way for you to easily navigate and manage any and all fundraising efforts that have been started for your nonprofit. So there may be uh, individuals that have started peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers for your organization. You may have had uh, projects that you have started for uh, specific initiatives for your organization. You may have them for LivePC, GivePC, or you may just have them from uh, previous history on the platform. Um, if you have any, you can access and see all of them there so that if you do have individual starting fundraisers for your organization for this event, that's where you can easily access all of those pages and information about them to follow up with those individuals that have started fundraisers for you. And finally, settings. Of course, this is um, your opportunity to kind of navigate and manage uh, any of the uh, overall settings for your page. And I'll show you some of the key settings that you have uh, available to you. One of them, of course, as I already mentioned, is the ability to add and remove administrators. So now that we've done a, a brief overview of what you'll see on that dashboard, we'll actually launch into the details of 
updating your page and accessing all the information that you'll see throughout that dashboard. So the first step in really preparing for your Live PC Give PC campaign will be to customize that profile page. As I mentioned, this is the main link that you'll be sharing with donors and supporters to make a donation to give to your organization. So hopefully lots of you have um, pages already built out with content from last year and you can take the opportunity to really optimize that and add new images, new content and information. And for those of you that may just be starting, don't be overwhelmed. There's not a ton of information that you need to add in to tell a really powerful story with this page. But you have the opportunity to customize the look and feel, your theme color, and really use this to tell a story about why donors should give to your organization, why they should give to your Live PC Give PC campaign, and what kind of impact you have in your community. So the first uh, opportunity you have to customize that page right at the top is editing your theme. This is really, as I mentioned, going to be setting the look and feel for your page. So you've got lots of great options here. Front and center is, of course, uploading your logo. Always important to make sure this logo has a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. If you're having trouble finding one uh, that fits this size, go to Facebook or Twitter your logo on Facebook or Twitter will be one-to-one -to, -one to uh, comply with their requirements. So that's a great logo to use and upload if you already have that prepared. A background image, that's what you'll see behind that logo. It's a really nice way just to add a little context to the donor when they come to the page. They're seeing your brand front and center in that logo. And then that image should hopefully evoke for the donor something about your organization and the work that you do or the role that you play in the community. Um, you can also select one of uh, the gallery background images that we have available. If you are um, have a limited supply of really good images or you're working on getting a great image, but you want to update something in the meantime, we do have a gallery that you can select from. Finally, you can um, play around with the colors on the page. You'll see this nice bright green color that you see here. That's a theme color that has been selected by the organization um, as it matches and um, ties in with the logo. So that's a color that you'll see throughout the page when you select that as your theme color. Um, so lots of great opportunities. You don't have to be a designer, you don't have to be a developer to really play around with getting a nice visual design on your page. And I'll mention that it's all of this editing is happening live on screen with you. So selecting new colors, uploading a new image, playing around with the filter over top of that background image, that's going to be something that you can see in real time while you're making these edits. And you can always continue to make adjustments until you're really happy with the display you're seeing there. So beyond sending that visual tone right from the top of the page, your story section is really where you can, uh, it's really the meat of the page. That's really your opportunity to tell a story to donors about why they should make their donation. So you've got access to a nice inline editor. That's that formatting bar you're seeing right at the top there. You have the option to add formatting, headers, bullets, lists, uh, links, videos, images, emojis. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff you can add into that story section and we encourage you to do so um, as nobody wants to look at one big block of text. The average person will not read through a full block of text. So bold and highlight and make larger anything that's really important and use video and images when you can to really help tell that story. Scrolling further down your main profile page, you have the option to add a media gallery to share additional visual imagery about your organization, the work that you do. Um, and you can also connect your Instagram account so that you can connect your Instagram gallery so that as soon as you add a new image on Instagram, it'll automatically update on your page on uh, Live PC Give PC. So great options there just to add a little more uh, dynamic visual display to your page. Uh, and we'll talk about this more a little later, 
uh, but you do have the option to optimize your social share settings so that when somebody shares your link on Facebook or Twitter, you can customize the image and description text that goes along with that link. We will by default include the information from your logo and that story section that you've built right at the top, but you may wanna personalize that with uh, a more focused message in the text that really tells people why they should give now. Um, so I'll show you in just a moment where you can access to optimize and really customize those social share settings. So once you move further down the dashboard, outside of actual on-page editing for your profile, we already mentioned the donations tab, that dollar sign icon that you're, you'll see is where you access a lot of really important for information for your campaign. The first, of course, is your donations report. This is something that you'll have access to in real time throughout the campaign. You can log in at any time to see uh, up-to-date information on donations made to your page. You Admins will by default receive an email notification whenever a donation is made. If you are receiving so many donations that you can't keep up with the notifications, that's a great problem to have and you are welcome to turn off those notifications in your user profile. But by default, any email will receive those notifications. Um, when it comes to disbursements, you can also access all disbursement information from the same um, dollar sign icon. There will be a tab accessible for disbursements. So you can see any past disbursements. Once we get beyond LivePC, GivePC this year, you'll be able to access a disbursement report so that you can reconcile anything, any funds that you receive with uh, the actual donation as it was made on the platform. And just a quick note on the process for disbursements. Our recommended process is direct deposit. So we encourage everyone to sign up for direct deposit. You can do that right in your settings tab on from your dashboard. It is free and easy to sign up. And that allows us to give, to disperse funds to you twice a month instead of just once a month if you opt to elect to receive funds by check. Um, but it also helps with other things like not letting that check get lost in the mail, not having to actually take the time to go deposit it. Uh, so lots of great benefits that come along with that EFT disbursement sign up. So we encourage everyone to sign up for that disbursement process. And again, you can do that right through your settings tab. You'll see a button that says set up EFT. It's very quick and easy to get that set up. So encourage everyone to get started with that. And that is something that you'll see in that to-do list that I referenced a little bit earlier. That's one of those key, um, key requirements or key uh, steps that we encourage you to take. So uh, another great thing to make sure that you have set up in advance of the event. Offline gifts. This is a really important part of the overall Live PC Give PC event, of course. Uh, this is an online giving day, but really, at the core of it, it's a day about giving back to causes that matter in the community. And not all of your donations may come in online through your page. And um, the community foundation and the event as a whole really wants to make sure that they can report on all the giving that happened throughout the day, whether it was online or offline or matching, lots of different great ways that giving happens. So if you do receive an offline gift, check or somebody gives cash, you have an event, something like that, you can add that directly to your page for Live PC Give PC, and you can decide whether that counts in your own organization's total on your page, and those totals will count in the overall Live PC Give PC grand total for the day. One note is that these Offline donations won't count for your leaderboard totals, uh, but it's a great way to make sure that your page reflects all the different types of giving and to do your part to make sure that the grand total for Live PC Give PC at the end of the day represents all the different ways that donors have given. And you can access that right from your donations report as you'll see up at the top of the page before you even get into any of the existing donor history, you'll see a total of any offline donations that have been given so far, and a little plus sign with a button uh, to add an offline donation. 
So very easy process to get those added uh, for your campaign. So donor experience, this is something I mentioned earlier. This is a new feature that uh, you'll have access to this year, also accessible through that main dollar sign icon on your dashboard. This is your opportunity to customize the checkout experience, both in terms of the process the donors go through to make their donation, and then the post-checkout experience, the thank you experience that donors are seeing. So you'll have the opportunity in this uh, step to choose what donor data you want to collect. So for example, you can choose whether you want to collect the billing address or the mailing address, the phone number, age, gender, uh, some of the basic demographic data. If it's important to you to collect that information from your donors, you can toggle a switch to turn that on and ask donors to share that information as a part of their checkout. If you don't need those, you can turn those off and have it be even more of a streamlined process for your donor. You can also add custom donation suggestions. So we always encourage people to uh, customize the experience in this way by helping a donor see what the value of their $50 donation is, for example. Uh, $50 supports 10 books for our students or provides 10 hot meals for a family, whatever it might be that that impact looks like within your organization, setting these custom donation suggestions really helps the donor to connect to that tangible impact. Um, there's other options as well, including adding a dedication uh, and including designations. If you have specific designations that you'd like donors to be able to select from. So lots of opportunities to customize there. And then once you have customized, you'll see right at the very top, in this screenshot here, the ability to view checkout. This is your chance to test what that checkout process is gonna look like for a donor. So once you've added the questions and set your custom donation suggestions, we always recommend testing that checkout process so that you know exactly what your donors are going to be seeing when they go to make their donation. It's also a great way to share with your board of directors or your executive director ahead of the event so that they have confidence knowing exactly what the donation experience will look like. And then when we move to post checkout, once a donor has completed their donation, you have two opportunities to customize that thank you experience. The first is a new feature this year, uh, and that is a thank you page that has been added. So when a donor completes their donation, they will see a thank you page that you have the opportunity to customize. Um, just like in your main story section, you've got lots of formatting options. You can add a video, photos, links right into that. So you can tell a nice personal thank you story right there. And you have the opportunity to customize that even further with a specific link that you want donors to go to once they complete their donation. So they complete their donation, they see your thank you page, and maybe you want to direct them to your homepage or your blog or to your events page. Wherever it might be, you can, you can determine what that next call to action is that donors have. And then just as you have in the past, you will have also the opportunity to customize the thank you receipt that is sent once a donation is made. Both of those are accessed under your donor experience tab in that post checkout screen. So the last uh, detail that you'll have access to in that donations screen is your matching grants. This is something that uh, those returning organizations may be very familiar with. Of course, we always encourage uh, nonprofits to secure a matching grant as a part of their Live PC, Give PC campaign. Um, when you do secure a match, you have the opportunity to add that matching grant as a display feature to your page on LivePC GivePC. So your donor doesn't need to pay their match through the platform. It's, a, it's your relationship to manage, it's your matching grant to manage, but you do have the option to add it as a display so that you can use the opportunity to one, recognize and acknowledge the matching donor if they'd like that, and two, get some of the other donors and visitors to your page excited about the opportunity to have more impact with their donation. So there's lots of flexibility. You can do a dollar for dollar match. 
You can also choose a two to one match, three to one match. You can have multiple matching grants on your page at a time, or you can set up sequential matching grants so that you know when your first matching grant runs out, you can have another one that falls into place. So lots of really uh, great options there to add some extra excitement, engagement, and urgency to the donation experience. And just a note, we already talked a bit about mat, uh, offline donations, but if you do have a matching grant that you enter on your page, you won't have to also add the amount of that match as an offline gift. We will account for that by you adding it as a matching grant available. So the last uh, option here on your um, dashboard will be the settings page. As I mentioned, this is where you can add or remove admins. This is where you can update your legal address. This is where you can set up that EFT disbursement that we've talked about already. And finally, the ability to customize that social share experience, which I mentioned a bit earlier. So lots of options there to kind of set the overall uh, experience and settings for your organization. And now we've gotten through covering um, the bulk of how to's and where you can find certain things on your page and on your dashboard. So we'll spend a few moments here now digging into some basic campaign strategies. Some of the important things to keep in mind, again, whether, whether this is your first year or you've been participating for many years. So the first uh, tip here is of course, use the resources that are available for you. The Park City Community Foundation has prepared all kinds of really awesome resources that can help you make the most of your campaign so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel, you don't have to think of everything all on your own. Social media guide, templates for newsletters and emails, um, lots of really exciting and helpful tools that you can see um, right on the nonprofit toolkit on the Live PC Give PC website, which is accessible, of course, at livepcgivepc.org. Aside from all of these great resources that are here, you can sign up for trainings like this one today. Uh, you can also access after today's training. Uh, this recording will be available on that nonprofit toolkit. You can also access great things like logos and photos that will help really uh, add extra uh, visual display to any of your communications, really make sure that they are on brand, but also taking advantage of, of the great um, assets that the Park City Community Foundation team has prepared for you. So definitely make the most of all those resources. They are prepared with you in mind to help you be successful with this campaign. So make sure that you take the time to review those uh, and see how they can help your campaign. Another really important tip is secure early donations. So of course, the giving day is November 9th. That's, that's really when all the magic and all the fun will happen, but you can start accepting donations for your campaign ahead of that event, you can start accepting them today. So while it's important to keep in mind that the urgency and excitement around the day really happens on November 9th and you don't wanna start hitting up your donor base too early too frequently and lose that value, it's certainly something that is recommended to start the conversation ahead of the event, start building momentum for your page to start getting the word out and allowing donors to make those donations early. Any donations that they make early will be processed immediately, but they will count for your leaderboard as a part of the event. So this is all also a great way to get a jump on uh, those leaderboard standings at the start of the event. Just like on the giving day itself, you'll be able to see any donations that come through right in your donations report and you'll receive notifications about them and donors do not need to create an account to donate. This is true for early donations and through the event itself. So your organization will do a ton of work to get the word out and make this campaign successful for your organization. But one of the number one ways that you can raise more money and engage more donors as a part of this campaign 
is by activating ambassadors for your cause. And there's lots of different ways that individuals or groups can serve as ambassadors for your cause. They can be volunteers, they can help you spread the word, they can share links, uh, post, re, repost or share your um, social media posts, or they can start a fundraiser on behalf of your organization. Lots of really great things that they can do. And it's important to think about who you have as these ambassadors, who are potential individuals or groups of people that can really help you amplify your campaign, help you get the word out to new people, and figure out what, what might be the right fit, what might be the right ask for each of those different individuals. You may have some that have a really great, really large social media following, so the best thing they can do to help you, and probably one of the things they'd be most comfortable with, is to share your posts on social. That's a great way to really use these ambassadors in a way that will work for them and your organization. And of course, if they do start a fundraiser on behalf of your organization, um, or if they're just spreading the word for you, it gives them the opportunity to tell their story about why they love your work. And that's always nice to have that kind of personal touch about the impact of your organization. Of course, especially if it's complemented with the communications that individuals are hearing from your organization about your work, it's nice to see that personal side of things too my brother went through this program, or I have a family friend who has benefited from this. I've seen firsthand the value. That kind of personal touch can really make a difference for donors in terms of encouraging them to make their donation. Um, and the last thing I'll mention here about ambassadors is once you identify them and ask them to uh, take on a certain role to support you, it's important to give them all the tools and strategy and help that they need. So for anyone starting a fundraiser or spreading the word, you may wanna send them some information, a logo, photo, uh, link to your page if that's how they're participating, um, maybe even a sample email that they can use and copy and paste to send to their contacts. Whatever you can do to help them be successful and then touch base with them, check in with them throughout the campaign so that they know that you value their support and participation, and you can keep them engaged throughout the process. Of course, we've talked a little bit about this already, but one of the key strategies to being successful in Live PC, Give PC, after you do all that great work to build a really powerful story on your page, is that you need to get people to that page. You need to spread the word through all different kinds of channels to get people to come to your page and make their donation. So first and foremost, it's important to think about all the channels that you have access to, to communicate to supporters and potential donors. So email, of course, is one of the most important to keep in mind, but there's plenty of others as well. Social media, through your website, any newsletters that you put out, lots of different ways to speak to your donors, where your donors might be listening or looking for you. So keep in mind your strategy for all those channels and make sure that your approach keeps a consistent message throughout those channels. That way, somebody who sees something on social media and gets an email from you won't be confused as to two very different stories about why you're participating in Live PC, Give PC, or what your goal is, or what you're raising money for. Uh, keeping that consistent message will really just reinforce your overall approach for the campaign. It's always important, too, to segment your communications by donor group. Uh, this is something that oftentimes small nonprofits don't necessarily have the time or the bandwidth to really figure out the best way to do this, but it can have a really uh, important impact in terms of return on your communications and engagement with your communications. So rather than just sending a single email to everyone you have in your donor database, take the time to segment out into groups and send a specific email to volunteers they contribute in lots of great ways all year round. So acknowledge that while you tell them about Live PC, Give PC. Maybe there's a volunteer opportunity associated with your Live PC, Give PC campaign that they might be particularly interested in. Recurring donors, another great example. They've shown support year round to your organization. They've already likely made a gift in this month because of their recurring donation. 
Doesn't mean that you can't share with them the importance and excitement of this campaign, but you may want to recognize that you know and you're grateful for the support they give year round. So that's just a couple ways that you can segment your communications to make sure that you're talking to donors uh, and recognizing their interest and engagement and involvement with your organization when you do that. Of course, planning and scheduling in advance is always helpful. Um, November 9th is going to be a fun, exciting day. There's hopefully going to be lots going on and a ton of donations coming in. And you want to be taking the time to engage with those donors, follow up with donors uh, right on the day. So planning and scheduling emails as well as social media posts in advance will live, give you the opportunity to really spend that day uh, responding to conversations that are happening and really doing what you can to amp up uh, rather than scrambling to try to get an email out because today's the day and you've got to make sure people know about it. And the last note that I'll make here about spreading the word, it's an obvious one, but it's important to keep in mind anytime you are spreading the word about your Live PC Give PC campaign, always make sure you have a very clear call to action with a link to your page to donate. The most well-crafted email or the most creative social media post will not be helpful if there's not a specific ask to donate and a link for people to easily get to the place to make their donation. So just an important thing to keep in mind, a little housekeeping to double check on all of those communications that you prepare. And with that, I am going to open it up for any questions that uh, anybody might have. So if you have asked them throughout, that's great, I'll take a look. And if you haven't had a chance, feel free to type in any questions that have come to you over the presentation. And here. All right, take a look at any questions that have come in. All right. One question that we have here is, uh, what is the minimum donation that a donor can make online? Uh, that's a great question. And the minimum donation on the platform is $5 to make a donation. So um, you can, of course, set the suggested donation levels that you encourage donors to give at higher than that. Um, you can select four of those custom donation suggestions. But donors can always choose to click the custom option and type in whatever amount they'd like to give. Uh, and the lowest amount is that $5 amount. All right, uh, I'm not seeing any other questions yet at this point. Uh, so I will go ahead and let everybody get off a little bit early here uh, from this call. If you do have any questions after today's webinar, as I mentioned, the recording will be available up on livepcgivepc.org on the nonprofit toolkit. And you're always welcome to email our friendly customer support team at support at mightycause.com. And they'll be happy to help get you all set up and ready for your Live PC Give PC campaign. And uh, we've got another training coming up here shortly. So make sure that you pay attention to that toolkit and sign up for our next training. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing everyone have a successful campaign for this year's Live PC Give PC event. Thanks, everyone.